also, I think we could, in addition to having animated the light, the birds, the people, etc., we could animate the trees slightly. And we could have, of course, gone through all the effort of doing that in 3D, but I think we can cheat something just in Nuke at this distance because, again, all the leaves are not very noticeable, so I think we can just distort them again with noise and get a little bit of a movement on them. Let's... Yeah, under our depth, maybe. Let's create a shuffle copy node. And we're going to create a noise. And let's have a look at it. Let's drop down the size of the XY to some really small number. And let's leave the rest as is. Maybe we could skew it a bit. So I'm just trying to think of what kind of direction I would want the movement to be in from the trees. So I think with all of them pointing slightly this way, maybe that would be good. And let me just add a grid to this. And again, I will increase the contrast. Yeah. Something like this. Maybe reduce this to point two five. And I think in the noise, I'm going to transform it maybe from zero in Y translation to at frame 50. Let's change this to 10. Actually, let's do minus 10. And let's reformat to be 4000 by 2000. And let's add the shuffle copy here. And here we're going to select forward channel and we're going to be wanting to add the RG NB from here into the UV channels here, so the red and green. And let's add an I distort node. Oh, whoops, I've got these switched around. I want them to go this way. So now if I add an I distort and select my forward channel, I'm getting everything to be distorted, but first of all, let's maybe reduce the amount. Yeah, maybe let's increase the mix here so it is sharper. So that way we're getting these clearer little distortions. If I reduce the mix, it kind of goes back to being average. Whereas at one, these distortions are very strong. So maybe let's keep it around here. And so the problem we're going to be having now is that we can't just use this one distort for both the foreground objects and the background because the scale is different and this doesn't account for that. What we could do, however, is, okay, first of all, grab our ID here that has our trees. And let's bring it down. And also, I'm going to bring around my depth pass. So, let's just bring it from here. And let's have a look. I'm going to add a key here. So, I will select areas, first of all, that are closer to the foreground. And while I will apply an I distort of one scale to that. And then I will select areas that are further away and apply a smaller eye distort. Not a 100% correct uh, solution or the best one, but 
it is very quick and I'd say the results will be so unnoticeable that it doesn't matter. So here, let's just look at the grid. Yeah, so if I do this, okay, now I should be able to just select that. First of all, I will invert this. And then I will apply this as, where are we? Here, if we create a merge mask node and plug in our trees here, we're gonna just add a shuffle. and select red. So now here in the shuffle, our alpha is red. And here if we mask this, oops, I think we want to invert this. Okay, so now we have multiplied our tree selection here by this selection and we're getting the alpha of just trees in the foreground here and I'm going to use this as a mask for my eye distort okay so these trees Let's have a look. Okay, so the distortion works. But perhaps, instead of having it just be moving on the trees themselves, I would want the trees to not have a hard mask around where the geometry is. So what I could do is create a erode node and erode into the minus or into the plus rather in this case and so now I have a higher or a bigger selection than just the trees that were provided by geometry and so now the actual outlines of the trees can be changed as well because this allows for that with a bigger alpha so for my background trees let's just copy this And let's have a look. Here, we're going to up this to maybe around here. So here, I'm marking an area that I don't want. And what I'm going to do is create another merge and stencil. And if I connect these two, now I am getting this selection that is here in the middle and here is also in the middle because this is this raised platform. So I will only be scattering or not scattering, creating this effect in this sort of mid range area. And the way this is achieved is by having this mask and this mask and taking this away from this. So we are just getting the in-between after that operation. And now if I find my original tree mask, so yep, here, and I mask that by this. Okay, so previously we had this mask, now we have this, and let's copy the dilate. And here we're just going to set it down to 1, so it's a smaller effect. 
and let's copy this i distort and plug this in and let's enter a smaller value for the distortion so we will be getting a little bit less here in the background but despite being an extremely subtle movement it adds a little bit of that sub pixel variation in movement that kind of sells the shot and makes it look slightly more realistic okay let's clean this up a bit all right so up next what we'll want to do is add some lens dirt to our shot and we're going to reuse the same image that we used in photoshop earlier but we're going to update the technique to work better with a moving shot instead of just a single frame concept so let me paste my image of lens dirt and it's got a nice bit of variety it's a little bit too bright so we'll have to darken it but i like this sort of dirt effect you get on the camera which will hopefully make the shot look a little bit more photographic so first of all this is the wrong format so we'll want to add a reformat and set this to 4000 by 2000 and and here if i create a new merge node and set it to screen and plug in my comp into b and my lens dirt into a so this is far too strong in a, of an effect so we'll have to tone it down a little bit let's maybe okay let's keep it like this for now and let's improve on the way this is structured so Let's hold down control and click here to add a dot and into it we will connect a blur. So we'll just get maybe about this much and let's make a little bit more space and let's create a shuffle copy node and we'll plug our blur into two and our Let's do it into one. And here, let's take the alpha from our input number one and let's put it into the alpha of our number two. So if we click here, and now we have the alpha from one in, in here. And let me also merge this over but let's turn down the opacity to maybe a fraction so we're just getting these faint sort of smudges of dirt and now let's pre-melt this and as we can see our lens dirt is multiplying with a blurred version of the background so if we now add this in here what I want is the sort of effect of like a the image coming through the camera lens in a smudged way due to smudges that are maybe even imperceivable to the eye but are just slightly there so now we have this going on but it's still a little bit too much so maybe maybe let's turn down the mix to 0.5 and that's more like it and of course because this is using our live comp these will correspond to the movement of the shot and hopefully add a little bit of a photographic elements to, element to the shot so now we have a reasonably nice image and I think what it currently lacks is a little bit of color correction that we added in Photoshop earlier just to make it pop a little bit more first I'm gonna create a color correct node and I'm gonna tweak the settings a little bit to make the image a little bit more blue or cyan and a little bit less red or neutral so first of all in the shadows I'm gonna go into gain and I'm gonna click here to create these sliders and I'm just gonna drop the shadow reds a little bit so we can already see the difference in the shadows and maybe let's drop the blue a little bit as well and this way we get slightly greener shadows 
And then in my midtones, let's do the same. Let's go into gain. And again, let's drop the reds a little bit. And actually, let's make it darker overall. Something like this. Okay, so that's a lot more moody and thematic already. I kind of like it. I think it's a little bit more exciting and mysterious. I think maybe if we went into the highlights. Let's see if we can adjust any of this. Okay, maybe, actually, maybe let's leave this. I think that looks good as is. What we could do, however, is maybe... Let's have a look at... Maybe increasing the gain here a little bit. Just an overall increase in the gain for the whole image. And maybe let's put the gamma up. And now, in our shadows, let's increase the contrast a little bit. Okay. And what we could do is, in our highlights, reduce the contrast a bit. Okay, so maybe not that much, maybe... Let's go for 0.4, and let's decrease the gamma a little bit as well. Okay. Lastly, let's maybe increase the saturation a little bit. Okay, so we're just making the colors pop a little bit more. So, before and after. And before and after. So it's a very subtle difference, but I think it makes for a slightly more impactful image. I think we could get rid of a little bit of the detail in the shadows, though. I think in my concept I had it a little bit more, I guess, hazy in the shadows. Not in terms of depth, but just... I kind of grayed out a lot of that detail to make it a little bit less attention grabbing. So what we could do is create a clamp and in our clamp let's maybe go for about this much and let's create a merge difference node and what we're going to do is we're going to take our original and our clamp image and we're going to split the difference and what this does is this leaves us with the pixels that are different between the two images and the amount of difference is I guess subtracted between the two and what this does is it gives us just these areas in the foreground that we clamped so now if we again merge and go to plug both of these in as over and whoops that's not exactly what we want I think this is because we now have an alpha in the difference so maybe let's have the channels be only RGB for both A and B so now we don't have an alpha and if we merge this over we're able to just get this clamp as a nice separate element here and it's very easy to enable and disable and control exactly how much we want of it so let's here in the properties of our merge reduce this effect that we are getting and maybe let's just drop it down to something very slight just to have a little bit of this evening out of these shadow areas and maybe let's add another color correct and let's just have a look at in our shadows reducing the blues a little bit and increasing the reds maybe the greens a tiny bit and the reds a little bit more okay so now we are getting this warmer glow 
in the shadows and I think it helps balance out the image against this sort of really cool light spilling from the background. So maybe this is a little bit much. We could just reduce it slightly, maybe. Okay, maybe this much. And maybe even in the mid-tones, let's go into our gain and let's increase this by just a little bit. Maybe a little bit in the green like so. So now I feel like we are getting a nice mix of uh, some reds and some greens and some blues and I think they kind of balance each other out quite nicely. We have other primary colors such as, well, <laughs> not quite primary, hello. And yeah, I personally like it, but feel free to do your grading whatever way you want. But hopefully this shows a couple of different techniques that you can use in your own work. So let's set up a couple more effects and we're gonna try to do a render of the sequence and just see if there are any other fixes to be made before we call it final. So what I'm gonna do next is I'll create a God Rays node, and with this we are going to create chromatic aberration. And I'd say it's a much better way than in Nuke than doing it in Photoshop, because you get to do whatever else you want underneath, and this is not destructive, and we can turn it off whenever you want, and we don't have to bake down our whole image. So let's go somewhere to the edge where we will be able to see the effect the most. And what we're going to do is for the channels, let's just select RGB. And let's disable the green. And now what we're going to do is scale up. And so you see this is a very extreme amount and we are getting the chromatic aberration effect just much, much, much stronger than we want it to be. So let's maybe do a little bit less, a little bit less. Okay, yeah, something like that. So we have a little bit of an effect, but if we view our image zoomed out, it's quite invisible and it should be. You don't want to have your image become very, very chromatic aberration-y, I guess, because then it just distracts from the story you're trying to tell and, and the, I guess, view that you're trying to show. I think. So let's just keep it very subtle, but it's a nice little photographic element that hopefully adds some realism to our image. And having done this, I'll, I guess for now at least, create a version of the image which will be half the scale. So it'll be a little bit quicker to view and I don't think we need to be working or at least showing the final sequence at 4K. It's If you're working, it's a, a bit more work and a bit more render time. However, once you reduce the uh, size down to half, you get a lot of benefits from working at higher resolutions because you get anti-aliasing for free and just the little details in sharpness that even though it's reduced, still remain. So let's do that and maybe let's create a sharpen and that's far too much. Let's reduce the size to one. And so that's just a tiny bit, maybe 1.5. Right, so we are getting a tiny bit of sharpening, but when we are more zoomed out, it's not visible, but it's just slightly, slightly helpful in kind of returning a little bit of that sharpness to the image that was lost when reformatting. We can also, of course, add some grain, maybe. Let's add this here. And that's, again, far too much. And in our presets, I'm going to choose Kodak 5217. And so this kind of has a grain that I quite like. But I think we could reduce the intensity of all of these by quite a bit. So, again, with grain, we want it to be a very, very subtle effect. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, 
So it just kind of takes away a little bit of the sort of artificial perfection that you get with CG images and just makes it a little bit more natural, I think. So let's take this and let's create a write node. And we are going to save this. I've pasted the address that I'm going to save it at here. And for now, I'm just going to stick with JPEG because I just want to see the overall impression of the image. I'm not really worrying too much yet about having it be high quality. Just let's see for this first pass how it looks. And then we'll do another pass where we will fix any tiny mistakes and do a proper high quality render. So let's just set the quality as high as it goes for a JPEG. And let's select render and frames 1 to 50 and click OK. So my render is now complete and let's have a look. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So it mostly works now, right? It maybe has a few things that need fixing, but I think overall we're in a good place. I would say perhaps it would be nice to get a little bit of interaction between these jets and the airship and the waterfall. And we could fake a little bit of that by using the spaceship as it flies past to distort the waterfall with some noise and just localize that to an area where the water would hit the spaceship. So I think we're going to try that. I think in addition, maybe our background is a little bit too uh, overblown. I think we could tone this down a little bit and make it a tiny bit darker. And... I think maybe we could have a little look at these jets themselves, but we'll see. I think they don't look too bad. And I think lastly, maybe we could add a, a little bit of motion blur to the sequence at the very end. So let's get into it. So let's start off with the airship interaction with the waterfalls. And let's just do something very simple for this one. Maybe let's go up to our airships and in our airship Z let's just go to here and view this image what we could do is first add just a tiny bit of extra fog over these spaceships and we'll add a little bit here so as this ship flies it looks like it's flying into this fog and interacting with this waterfall. So let me just create a grade node. And here I'll turn this up to maybe 4. Okay, so now these seem to blend in a bit too well, but we will reduce that a little bit. Let's create a rotor. And Let's copy a reformer and let's just plug this in. And here, let's make selections of different airships at different depth levels. And this one. And then let's go to our last frame and just check that these are still within these boxes. Okay. And... Let's now disable these and let's have a look at these rotos by themselves. And so if I reduce the opacity, I get no fog over the spaceship. So let's just have a look. Maybe let's put on this much. So it sort of is at the same depth as all the buildings around it. 